Welcome to the Juice Box Podcast. This is episode 111. Today's episode is brought to you by Omnipod, the world's only tubeless insulin pump. Unlike traditional insulin pumps, the Omnipod doesn't have any tubes, plus it's waterproof. So you get three days of nonstop insulin without any need to disconnect. The podcast is also sponsored today by Dexcom, makers of the G5 mobile continuous glucose monitoring system. You can learn more about our sponsors later in the program or by visiting myomnipod.com forward slash juice box or dexcom.com forward slash juice box. On this episode of the Juice Box Podcast, I'm speaking with Derek Thieler. You know Derek from the TV show Baby Daddy. Baby Daddy's available now on Netflix and Freeform TV. What you may not know is that Derek has had type 1 diabetes since he was three years old. This conversation was fantastically open and honest. I almost didn't expect Derek to be this forthcoming about living with type 1 diabetes, but he just really was, put everything out there. He talked about everything, about what it's like to date with type 1. We discussed his advocacy around the disease. He told me about what it was like to play sports in high school with type 1. He shared a story about meeting Dwayne The Rock Johnson recently. He even hinted at the end about an opportunity he has coming up in the acting world that just sounded super. Anyway, I really think you're going to love Dark. You know, he told me that he's embraced this disease, he knows who he is, and he's not going to let anything get in his way. I just really enjoyed this conversation. I hope you do too. Please remember that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making changes to your healthcare plan. I am Derek Thieler. I uh, am a type one diabetic. I had I've been di- I was diagnosed when I was three years old. And uh, now I'm 30, so I've had it 27 years. And um, yeah, I, I grew up in, I was born in Alaska and then grew up in Colorado. And I, I got my degree in pre-medicine at Colorado State University because uh, I wanted to learn as much as I could about my disease. And I, I specialized in sports medicine and nutrition. And um, I, uh, I guess I, I kind of thought that I was going to go that route and get into, uh, get into endocrinology. But... Uh, my senior year of college, I, I realized that what I really wanted to do was go to go to Hollywood and be an action hero. So uh, that's kind of that's kind of how I landed. Now I've been in LA for about six years, and um, I still want to do whatever I can to to reach out to the diabetic community and build awareness. Yeah, that's really good. So, how long were you in Alaska for? Um, I was there until I was six. So, I mean, I was I was a baby. I don't yeah. remember that much. Okay, and and you a two parent family or one or. Two parent family, and also have a, a younger sister who's a type one diabetic as well. Oh no, kidding! How old is she? She is now twenty twenty eight, two years younger than me. Okay, so that wasn't where I was going to head with the conversation, but now I'm interested. Are there other endo issues in your family line, like beyond diabetes? No, nothing, nothing that uh, that we know of as far as family history at all, besides my sister and I. That's crazy. And and how far yeah. apart were you diagnosed? Uh, we, we were both diagnosed at the exact same age when we were both three years old. So two years after, wow. after I was diagnosed, she was. Well, wow. do you have any frame of reference? Do you have memory from her diagnosis when you were six or not really? You, you know what? I really truly think my first memory I ever had was, uh, was my sister being diagnosed and seeing my family, you know, cry for the first time I'd ever seen that. And it was a pretty, uh, pretty sad day. It's something that I think I'll always remember. Isn't that something? Yeah, she. I think we just used my uh, my blood uh, test kit and checked her blood sugar, and she was, you know, five hundred, six hundred, and that was it. It's just such a frightening. Uh, so my daughter's twelve, um, but I have mm-hmm. a, I have a seventeen year old son, and you know, it's just it really is one of those thoughts that just lingers in the back of your head forever. You know, right. am I going to wake up tomorrow and it's going to be it's going to be him next, or you, you know? Yep. I, I, I have a feeling I'm going to be just like that uh, when it's time for me to have kids. Yeah, I, so, definitely. So that's interesting. Do you? Does the process of your, and, you know, the experience of you having type one, your sister having it, does it thwart you at all from wanting children? 
You know what? Um, my parents, I, I was so lucky. My parents were, were amazing parents. They would, you know, they'd get up every single night to test our blood sugar because they were so afraid that we'd, we'd get low it in the middle of the night. Yeah. And um, we, they were very responsible when it came to treating it. And um, I, as far as me having my own kids, I know it would, it would be a huge responsibility if one of them or, you know, if they were type, type one diabetic, but I don't, you know, I, I, I'm very proud of my life and, and the things that, that I've done. And I feel like there's, that's no reason to not have kids is be, because they could be type one because, you know, look at the way I'm living. So I almost asked you that question because I felt like you'd answer that way because I wanted other people to hear it. I think that's a concern that only exists in the minds of parents who have children with type one. Like pe- yeah. people living with type one diabetes, like you don't, you don't get up in the morning and think of your life as more of more or less of a struggle than anyone else does i would imagine like day to day never never day to day there's the occasional time when uh you you can't get your blood sugar up and there's something very important you got to deal with uh there's that kind of occasional time when it's like man i I really wish i didn't have to deal with this Mm -hmm. but it really is it's a 24 7 um it's 24 7 disease It's, it's something you constantly have to deal with and uh as far as i'm concerned i've, I've never had a life without it yeah. so i i um I, I rarely have those moments where i'm like you know why me because i i guess the way i always look at it is better me than someone else because i i feel like i'm uh i'm doing the most with what i have i always try to imagine that my daughter being diagnosed so early like one of the really beneficial parts of that is that she really doesn't know a life without diabetes and, yeah, I, I yeah. think that it, that that is a, a benefit um, in in a little bit in some ways because uh, you know those who were diagnosed when they're 15 or or even older, you know they've they've gone through their life um, eating whatever they wanted and, and not having to be responsible in that way, you know. Well, you, but yeah. um, I was just go going ahead. to say last last night's a great example, and I always joke there's always a great example of diabetes every day. But last last night, my daughter, uh, we keep a, a pretty tight hold on her blood sugar. Her A1C is like, it was 5.6 last time. So, Oh, that's something to be proud of. Congrats. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, but, 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 you know, with that, you, you, we, we found a stability that, um, that works for us. But sometimes you get low still, like, you know, even though it doesn't happen very often. Last night was one of those times we had a, a pump change in the late evening and then her blood, mm-hmm. her blood sugar got real, like, like sticky. It wouldn't move. And I was okay. p- pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. And then all of a sudden she goes to bed and it starts moving. So I'm watching it on the Dexcom, and um, and the Dexcom did catch it, but it caught it. By the time I got into her and tested her, she was like 35. Yeah, and that's scary. Yeah, so you know we did the thing. Like you know, Dirk, it's it's kind of old hat by now. She drank a juice. I shut her basal off. I waited a of couple of minutes. I tested again. It looked like mm-hmm. it was holding, and then all of a sudden it looked like it was going to drop. So she ate a ban- ate a banana. Like all this stuff happened. And the reason I tell you this is because this morning I'm taking her to school and I said, hey, pretty bad low last night. And she's like, what? And I said, <laughs> I said, your, I said your blood sugar was pretty low last night. And she's like, I don't remember. And I said, uh, you don't remember eating a banana? And she's like, nope. <laughs> so That's funny. Just, just no recollection of it whatsoever. I was, it made me kind of wonder when I was thinking about talking to you today. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you live alone? Um, I do live alone. Uh, in, in the past, as far as uh, in college and, um, and afterwards, I've always had roommates because I, I always have kind of had that in the back of my mind. I've been a little bit nervous that there could be that one time where, um, where, you know, I go unconscious, uh, I go into insulin shock or whatever, and I'm alone. I currently have a, a girlfriend who helps me a lot with my diabetes. So I, uh, I also have the Dexcom, which does the, the alerts with urgent lows. I'm sure you you uh, are aware of. Yep. So I've got a whole community around me too that's making sure that I'm I'm up and running still. You know. That's excellent. And it, it make, so that's what I was wondering. Sort of like when you're I, I recognize that you're not married. So when you're dating, when do you mm-hmm. when do you introduce the idea that you have diabetes and how much of it do you explain? That like is it something you give over slowly or is it one of those things? Yeah. You, how does that work? <laughs> right. That's a, that's a really really good question because it's kind of different with everyone. You know, if you're if you're single and you're doing the first date thing, it's like when do I bring this up and how much will it scare this other person that I'm dating? Yeah. Uh, because I, I usually go into it as uh, as a joke. You know, I have um, I, I don't know if you know this, but I've got machines attached to my body in various places and I'm kind of like a terminator, you know, and, um, and that I describe the disease and gauge the interest level. But, um, in, in all of my experience that I've ever had with, uh, with dating, with, uh, with the devices and type one diabetes have all been good. And, in, in 
uh, once once the other person understands it, it's uh, it's you know just part of the part of our life. Having to deal with uh, the occasional low and making sure that I, I'm being responsible with myself. Well, now, now, Derek, to, to to be completely candid, I was talking with my wife about this, about talking to you this afternoon, and I brought okay. that, I brought that question up. I said I'm going to ask Derek about that, and she goes, "I'm having trouble." She's looking at a photo of you online. She goes, "I'm having trouble imagining what this guy could tell me that would stop me from wanting to go out with him." <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. Tell her thank you for that. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I, I'm sure there are people out there who are, who are, you know, afraid of, of machines or, or like, I don't know, a chronic disease like this. I don't, I don't really know. But, um, in my experience, I've, I've, I've never had anyone be afraid of, of, of me or, you know, yeah. the way that I have to deal with it. I've asked other people that question who are dating in the past and, you know, mm-hmm. I've had, I've had some women say that men have been scared off by it and vice versa. And then I had yeah. one girl, one girl told me like, I knew, I knew that the guy was right when he just started talking to me about it the way I hoped he would. And now they're married and you, you know, like I, sometimes I wonder if, if having to tell somebody something like that doesn't help, kind of, help you cut through kind of the BS to find the people who really like you. You know what I mean? You know what? I, I think, I think that's a really good point. I, I think that is a, a good way to really open up quickly and, and be honest about something that you really have to deal with, um, all the time. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think that that's a, that's a pretty quick tell uh, as to how, how long the relationship's going to last. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, diabetes, I think I always try to couch it when I say it like this, that, you know, I, I would do anything obviously to make it go away for all of you, not just my daughter, but, Mm-hmm. Uh, but in the meantime, it, it does teach a, a, there are a lot of great lessons that I've seen come from it, you know, and, and that, that have yeah. been really valuable in life. And maybe this is just one of them. I, uh, I absolutely agree with that. I, I also think that, um, growing up with it, if you get it at an early stage in life, it, it teaches you to, that you have to be responsible. It's, um, I, I feel like it taught me a lot about healthy eating habits and, and being healthy. And I, I did sports growing up and having to deal with with my blood sugar constantly with that, I, I think that it really uh, rounded me to, to be the person that I am. And I, I think in a lot of ways it did help me yeah, I don't growing think, up. I don't think anyone knows their own health better than somebody with type one. Like you're so, I totally, you know what I mean? I agree. Yeah, I, I agree. You, you're, you're in tune with it. And um, you know, the, the, a very subtle change can change a lot uh, as far as your blood sugar. What kind of sports did you play growing up? Uh, basketball and football were always my sports. Uh, I, I kind of focused on basketball. That was always my very favorite. And I played on like club teams and we'd go all over the country and my whole summer was completely devoted to basketball. And, uh, that, that got challenging when you're, when you're traveling a lot and you're, you're staying in hotels and, and, uh, basketball camps and colleges with your friends and everyone, you know, all they packed was candy. It's like, uh, it's, it, it's, uh, teaches you a lot about, about keeping your blood sugar regulated and, and being ready for the game because sports were pretty much my whole life until uh, until after high school. So you, and so you were managing yourself like your parents weren't there. Like what? So we're talking about high school age. First, let me ask you this because people talk yeah. about how um, you know the the maturity process messes with your blood sugars. You're how, how tall are you? Six five or six six? I couldn't get a consensus online. <laughs> Well, you know, it depends on who you ask. The truth is, I'm about six seven. Okay. But my uh, my acting resume says six four. <laughs> is it is is it because people could think of you as too tall? Yeah, that's yeah. definitely a problem here. Uh, I I bet most people didn't know that. As, as far as you know, it, it's a problem to uh, to b- book a big lead role or a, a supporting role when the lead actor is you know Tom Cruise size five five. Right. So um, because yeah, then I got act- a lot. Because then you're acting next to a girl standing on a bench for three months. Then. Like, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, yeah, we work with Apple boxes a lot. Right, right, right. Okay. I didn't think of that. Okay. So but what ages were you in that process? Was it very consistent or did it happen? Like, it, it wasn't at all. No. For me, it was weird. I, um, I was kind of average height my whole life, average build. Mm-hmm. And then my junior summer, my junior year of high school, I grew six inches in one year no kidding. and gained, gained 50, 60 pounds. So I went from the uh, the varsity point guard on my basketball team to the center in one year. Pretty quickly, yeah. The poor yeah, kid, so that, the that, that, that was insane. <laughs> yeah, it, it was crazy. And so I, you know, I had to pretty much learn two whole new positions as I moved up. Right. And then uh, I, I really didn't understand or get a feel for, for my body type until I was 
you know, 21 years old and in college because I had, had been sitting in sitting in my size for a couple of years then. So it was weird for me. It was awkward. It, are is there anyone in your family that's as tall as you? Is it, or is no? It, I'm I'm the I'm the tallest. My my dad's always been pretty tall. He's about six four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but still, six four is like, hey, that guy's tall. You, you know, uh-huh. yeah, six seven's like, wow, what happened? Like that's, that's yeah, that, that, yeah, that's the difference right there. I agree. It's like I have this this moment. Um, I don't know, like once every couple of weeks where I'm sitting down in a restaurant and I see some guy walk in and I'm like, holy cow, that guy's huge. He must play for the NBA. And then I stand up and I'm an inch taller than him. <laughs> so it's, uh, it, it, it's weird. It's a weird, uh, it, it's, it's a weird world being as tall as me and um, being told no a lot in, in this acting industry because of my size. Well, it almost makes me feel better, Derek, because <laughs> I'm just, an, I'm 5'9". I'm an average size. And... Uh-huh. Still, most people walking around, I'm taller than, and, mm-hmm. and you know, and, and so I don't notice that I that I'm basically I feel short. But when someone taller than me approaches me, I feel mm-hmm. I feel like a child almost right away. Like it's a really <laughs> it's a really weird feeling to have someone t- tower over you. I guess a feeling that you don't really get to experience ever. So well, no, no. When I get to experience it, it's very weird. Yeah, it's, uh, because you know there are there are those. Very, very tall people out there, and then when I'm approached by somebody taller than me, it's always like, "Oh, wow! It's this is this is how a lot of people feel when I come and talk to them." Yeah. Did you ever have the feeling that you ever meet somebody who you feel like could grab you and just throw you if they wanted to? Because I can't imagine you do, but I have that feeling once in a while. <laughs> really? You, you know what? I um I I don't want to get too off topic, but yeah. uh, my uh, one of my absolute heroes is uh, The Rock. Okay. And I got to I got to meet him not too long ago. Uh, I got to meet him about three or four months ago. Right. And um, I he walked in the room and I, I he's like my hero. I love what he does. Right. He's so positive. I love the films he makes. And um, he came up to me. I I, I don't want to use profanity, but he came up to me and uh, I was the first one he saw in the room. And he shook my hand, looking right in the eye, and said, "If you were a big mother effer, or I mean, he said, if you were a mother effer, you'd be a big one." And uh, he he kind of left me speechless and then walked away and I was like I should have said something and then uh, I, I talked to him later I talked to him later but like it was one of those moments that I did I did uh, have a real starstruck moment by a really big dude that's pretty cool so so to get back to it you were traveling in uh, in your high school years to play basketball you were managing your own diabetes at that point what was the technology you were using back then um, I got an insulin pump when I was 15 so throughout, you know, half of my high school, I did injections and then I got a pump and that kind of opened everything up as far as being able to eat whatever you want. That was something that was totally new for me. And I got it. I got to the technology a little bit late because, um, I I was giving myself injections from six or seven years old, um, on and pretty much managing it myself besides, you know, the, the late night occasionally. And then, uh, when I was 15, I got my first insulin pump and I remember my sister and I got it the same day. And we went uh, directly to IHOP and got pancakes with real maple syrup and all of the fixings. And it was like the best, one of the best days of our life because we could actually have all those kinds of foods and bolus for them, you know? That's incredible. Yeah. I hear everybody, it's funny, that's the, the thing when people uh, test drive the artificial pancreases, the first thing they say is they went to find waffles or pancakes. And yep. uh, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Excuse me for one second. Okay, good. Sorry, I just had a package in the door. Okay, while Dirk's getting his delivery, we'll talk about the sponsors. Seems like a good spot to put the ad, don't you think? First, let's start with Omnipod. My daughter has been using the Omnipod tubeless insulin pump forever, since she was four years old, and she's 12 now, so some simple math would tell you that that's like eight years. When you think of traditional insulin pumps, you think of this unit that you carry around in your belt or in your pocket, It's attached to you with an infusion set and sometimes two and three feet of this plastic tubing that allows the insulin to get from the unit into the infusion. But Omnipod does not have any of that. It is a completely tubeless insulin pump. This beautiful tiny little device adheres to you and you run it with a wireless controller. So what are we talking about here? No tubing, all snaking through your clothes and everything, trying to hide it in your, you know, a dress or your t-shirt. There's no device clipped onto your belt. I mean, it's not 1983. You don't need a pager with you, right? You need sleek. You need now. You need what works and what's easy and what makes your life better. That's the Omnipod. You want to go to myomnipod.com forward slash juice box 
And there, the good people at Omnipod will be happy to send you out a free, no obligation demo pod. You can check it out in your own time, decide what you want, get back to them and say, hey, you know what? I do really want to try this. And then they'll help you walk through the entire process of getting started. It really could not be simpler. If you want to use the same great technology that my daughter's been using for eight years, the one that is helping her keep her A1C where it is, go to myomnipod.com forward slash juice box to find out more. All right, now let's talk about Dexcom. And as most of you may know, my daughter Arden uses the Dexcom G5 mobile continuous glucose monitoring system that tracks her glucose levels throughout the day and night, notifying her of highs and lows so she can take action. But that's not all it does. Dexcom also has a share feature, so Arden can have up to five loved ones, like her mom and I, track her numbers in real time. No matter where Arden is or what she's doing, she always has backup. Now, if that's the kind of peace of mind that seems like something that you'd like to know more about, I think you should go to Dexcom.com forward slash juice box or click on the link in your show notes to find out more. Now keep in mind, CGM based treatments require finger sticks for calibration, may result in hypoglycemia if calibration not performed or symptoms expectations do not match CGM readings. You can always contact Dexcom toll free at 877-339-2664 for detailed indications for use and safety information. Omnipod and Dexcom have been longtime sponsors of the Juicebox podcast because they are the key pieces of diabetes technology that we use to keep my daughter's A1C between 5.6 and 6.2 for almost the last four years. If you want to find out how you can get these devices for yourself, like I said, go to myomnipod.com forward slash juicebox or dexcom.com forward slash juicebox. All right, let's see if Dark's got his package in the house. Okay, well, uh, I'm back now. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's no problem. It'd be a great place to put the ad later. Don't worry about it. Uh, so, okay, great. <laughs> um, so, uh, okay, so so you're managing yourself with shots. Now, do you have any feeling back then? Are you going to an endo quarterly, like I imagine you're going now, or or was it not like that in the early days? Um, no, it, it wasn't wasn't quarterly. Um, I actually, you know what, I, I didn't have a great relationship with my endo when I was a kid. Okay. Um, I felt I felt like whenever I went. Um, you know, it was basically like it, either you get your A1C down and you get better control or you're getting, you're not going to make it to 30 or whatever. You know, it was kind of like this scary experience. And my sister and I really disliked going. So um, it, it's, it's obviously a lot different now because, you know, I, 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 under, I understand my body better and I'm in decent control and, and I'm not a kid. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing we went probably twice a year to my endo when I was a kid. But you had the, you had the one who just, cause I've talked to a ton of people. So you just had the one that didn't like what you were doing for whatever reason and decided uh-huh. the, way to, the way to handle it for you was just to try to scare you. To scare us. Exactly. Yeah. Which, which for the record didn't help you at all. Uh, for the record, I, no, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I, 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 didn't want to go and, and learn more about the technologies and more about how to, how to treat it. Um, and you know, it's, I don't think it's a really good thing when you're an eight year old kid, not thinking you're going to make it, you know, past 25 on a daily basis. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, You're right. Because it seems like, especially in a, in a growing mind still, instead of that in inferring to the kid, which I'm assuming what the doctor hoped for was like, Hey, scared straight kind of thing. It would, mm-hmm. it, to me, it seems more like it would make you feel like, hey, you know what? If I'm not going to make it that far anyway, then what's the point? Right? Yeah, like, in, in in some ways, you're right. Yeah. And uh, I, I also had had a you know a moment through my treatment of the disease when I I didn't care as much and I didn't take it as seriously, and that was that was hard on me too. And uh, I think it had to do with uh, with that endocrinologist particularly as well. Yeah. So we started talking earlier about when when you when you meet somebody and they and you bring them into your life and, and what and you, you know, explain you have diabetes, but once you become serious with somebody, is it difficult for you or freeing for you to let them into your kind of day to day care? Do you, do you do that at all? Or do you stay private or how do you handle it? I, I definitely, it, it's actually not hard at all. It, it, at this point in my life, I know who I am. I'm, I'm, embra- I'm embraced, you know, uh, this disease and, and my, how I have to deal with it. And, 
and I, I, I want to be what I can as a, as a role model. So it's like, it's, it's not something I'm afraid to share with at all. If people come up to me and ask me what's on my arm when it's a Dexcom or what's in my pocket when it's my pump, I, I love talking about it because I feel like um, in the position that I'm in, um, awareness is something that I can really bring to the table for sure. And so when it comes to dating life and, uh, and that kind of stuff, I, I'm not private at all about it. I'm open. I've, I, you know, I got my test kits all over the house. And, um, I, I bring them in and, and encourage help too. Cause they, you know, you, as you know, when your, your blood sugar gets low, sometimes you can't help yourself in, in the most uh, effective way. Right. Have you had experiences like in college or, or beyond that where you needed somebody to help you? You know what? I, I, I only have one real experience that was really scary. And, uh, even my mom doesn't know the whole, all the whole backstory of this because she, you know, it really freaked her out. Yeah. But um, the uh, one time I I just got a brand new pump and the settings were off and it was delivering too much insulin and it was like my 22nd birthday so I went out and had a few drinks of course and um, and I uh, I didn't have dinner that night and my blood sugar got extremely low and I was in a I was in a house with roommates and uh, they had to um, call an ambulance for me because my blood sugar was I think 19 when the uh, when the paramedics got there. Wow. And, um, yeah, that was a pretty scary experience because we had a whole bunch of friends over from the night before and they were all watching and I wasn't, I, I was completely unconscious. And that was, uh, that was the, the one time that I've had a moment like that. No, at least your friends did the right thing. There's kids can, even in their twenties can, you know, it, it would be easier for somebody to just to, like laugh and walk away from you. But I guess if you're open and they understand you have diabetes, then they're going to think, yeah. about, they'll think about well, it differently. Well, yeah. Then, and, and that's what I mean when, when it comes to people that I'm around and people that I work with or people that, that I, I, you know, am social with, I always uh, make sure that they know exactly how to handle a situation where I'm not coherent or I'm not uh, responding. And um, I, I think that's important. That's something that I, that I always preach too when it comes to uh, uh, new diabetics. That the people in the workplace and their friends and, and their and their family need to be aware of how to treat uh, a, a super low blood sugar because it it can be dangerous. You know, I was I interviewed Victor Garber last year, and mm -hmm. um, he has type one. I don't know if you know that or not, but um, he said that when he worked on Alias, Jennifer Garner would um, like she she could tell when he was low before he knew sometimes. Yep, and she would come up to him and say, "Something. Do you have anything going on like that with the people you act with?" Absolutely, especially with uh, my ba my baby daddy cast. Um, they, they first of all, they're like a family. I mean, we got to a hundred episodes this season, and we've been doing this. We've been doing this together for, I guess, five years now, and we're a real family. Uh, I even lived with the baby daddy, my my TV brother, and all of them. Are are completely aware of the signs of uh, of me going down, and it's 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 funny on set. It's it it is something that that is more visual than uh, even when, when my blood sugar gets low. I don't even really realize it sometimes, mm -hmm. and uh, my I start misplacing my words and my lines when we're doing takes, and then every once in a while, like one of my castmates will be like, Derek. Um, how was your blood sugar? Like, you, I think you might need to go get a Coke because there's the occasional time where we're shooting and we've got the whole audience there and we've got our 100 person crew and I need to just take five and go chug a Coke to get my blood sugar up so I'm ready for the scene, you know? Yeah. Now, when that happens, is it just sort of like, hey, we're taking a break for a second or how open is that situation? Is it, I mean, if there's an audience there, yeah, if there's, if there's an audience there, um, it's not made a, it, it's not, uh, they're not aware that my blood sugar is low. It's more of a, you know, we're going to take a five. There's a guy, there's an MC, there's music playing. They have no idea. They're having a good time no matter what. Right. And then meanwhile, I've got a PA like running to the, to the drink cooler to grab me something. And, and I've got, you know, uh, I, another PA grabbing my, my test kit out of my dressing room. And, and it's something that I can usually get handled within five minutes. So it's not really that big of a deal. But it is, I mean, in this business, t time is money. And the last thing I want to do is make a hundred people wait around for me to get my blood sugar up. So that's something I'm very conscious with, especially while we're shooting. So where do you like your blood sugar to be while you're shooting? While we're shooting, you know what? I, I, um, like it to be a little bit on the higher end. Like if I'm like around 140, 130, that's exactly where I want to be. Okay. Because I asked you that because my daughter is, you know, she, she's 
she plays softball very competitively as, as competitively as you can do something when you're 12, but cool, you know, cool. you know, to say that she plays three games, like this past weekend, she played three games Saturday, three games Sunday. And yeah, there's a, a lot. there's a sweet spot for her blood sugar where you can see her foot speed is sort of maximized. Like if it gets too high, she slows down. If she gets too mm-hmm. low, like, you know what I mean? Her hand, it's just, I totally understand that. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. So hey, well, what, what's her sweet spot? What is it? I think, Honestly, I think she's really good right around 120, and, cool. and that seems to be her spot. Like she can get lower and still play defense, but her her hand eye for batting seems to change if she gets a little too low. And, yeah. And we did have a, a, a situation on Sunday where she was just like sitting at like 100, and I was like, "Oh, this is great." And then all of a sudden, I got the you know the beeping that she had gotten mm-hmm. below 70. We have Arden's Dexcom threshold set at 70 and 130, and so she right. was under 70. I grabbed the juice. By the time I sort of got down to the to the field to where she was, she was still getting lower, and she hit. She she mm-hmm. bat, she batted when her blood sugar was like sixty on the Dexcom, and oh, she, yeah? she just just fouled a couple off and then struck out. And, okay. and, and but then I could see the arrow come back around, so I was comfortable she was going back up again. But then she went out in the field, and a girl bunted with a girl on first base, and she popped the bunt up. I watched her crash the bunt, catch it in the air, and then double the girl off at first. Nice. Yeah, Good right, play. Right? But, yeah. but her blood sugar was like 70 then. Now, in keeping that in mind, if I ask her how she feels, she doesn't really feel low until she's in the mid-50s. Yeah. Right? Okay. And, and so I, it's, it's an oddity to know that your body might be not performing the way you expect it to, but you don't have any feedback to let you know that that's true. It, it, yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. I know exactly. And, and you know, um, I, I've got a couple of points, too, when we're on this. Um, my, uh, I, I, can, I can handle my job as far as, like, working on baby daddy if I'm a little bit higher. Like, I, I can always handle my lines and, uh, and remember my, my points, my blocking motions and all that. It's just when I get lower is usually when I have an issue uh, as far as memorizing my lines. So, um so yeah, that that's interesting that that Arden's that way. But um, something else I was gonna say, I just forgot it. But it was along the same lines. Um, but anyway, we I guess we could just continue. You made me wonder, like, can you see it when you? I don't know if you go back and watch what you've done ever, but can you ever see on your face? Can you look at yourself later and go, I can tell my blood sugar's high there? Or uh, no. you know what? I I it's not as easy when I'm high. It's more when I'm low. Well, when I'm low, like there's been times where uh, you know I, I get the sweats and I just try to power through it because. Uh, we've, we've really got to make the scene and move on. Right. And I, in you know, everyone's like, you need a five. I'm like, no, we'll just, just, just pound it out. Let's get it done. And then I see the scene back and I can tell that my blood sugar was definitely low for that scene. So that's <laughs> they, pretty interesting. They were asking for a reason. Yeah. And then, and th- I remember what I was going to say as well. Um, as, as I've been growing up too, with, with diabetes, uh, I feel like I, I'm sure, I don't know if this is going to be the case with, with Arden, but, uh, with me, as I've gotten older, it's been harder to pinpoint exactly what my blood sugar is. Um, when I was a kid, I, I could just guess and I'd be within five to 10 points always of exactly what my blood sugar was. And as you get older, I feel like, um, well, I mean, especially with me, but with my sister as well, it's harder to know exactly where your blood sugar is as, as, you, as you age. Yeah, it's funny you said that because I can... Based on, you know, I'm the one who mainly oversees Arden's blood sugar. My wife works full time and, you know, she's not, right, right. she's not as involved. You could almost ask me at any point where I think her blood sugar is and I know. But yeah, that's because cool. I have this expectation of what it's going to do as long as it's reasonably following my expectation. So you're, that, that's what you're talking about. There was a time when you could say, hey, I, I, I know I'm 80 right now and, and be close. Easily. And that's going Easily to give for years. why. I don't know why. I, I, I don't know. I, I guess it's common, though. It's common. As you get older, it's harder to pinpoint exactly where you're at or which way you're going. How often do you and your sister talk about diabetes, or do you not? Um, we used to a lot. Um, I, I mean, she's actually the reason I got my Dexcom. Okay. She, uh, she was trying to get pregnant recently, um, about two years ago. And uh, we, you know, both of us were kind of hesitant with getting another device on our body. And um, I didn't know that much about the technology or uh the features for it and she told me that uh it's it's something that i really should look into it's really helped her uh get her a1c down and it's really helped her stay in really good control because she was trying to get pregnant and that's very important to her and so uh that's why i checked it out so uh she's she's basically the reason i i got a dexcom system and i love it and um 
since then she's actually gotten pregnant and had her first child. So that's pretty cool. Oh, congratulations. That's really cool. So you're a, you're an uncle. I'm an uncle. Nice. Well, you know what they, the, the, um, doctors want pregnant, uh, pregnant women to have an A1C, I think of six or sub six to, to carry a baby. Yep. They want them to keep it very low because the, I guess the blood sugar, um, as it gets high, it can affect the, the child. So she was, she was hovering around the, uh, like the 70, 80 range for most of her pregnancy. Yeah. And it's, it, it, you know, it's funny that, you know, I, you know, I mentioned to you earlier, my daughter's last day once he was five, six. So she's been between five, six and six, two for almost four years now. It's pretty amazing. And, and But thank you. But completely impossible without Dexcom, I, I think, because I, I had been doing it for a long time before that. And I, uh -huh. I struggle. I couldn't keep it, you know, and so the way we use the Dexcom is sort of more of a like I always think of my daughter's blood sugar as something that you bump and nudge around. Like you don't ever want it to get yep. like flying. So you know you see one thirty diagonal up, you get a little bit of insulin. You know you mm -hmm. see you see eighty five diagonal down. Sometimes I'll just cut her basal off for a little while. Like you're trying to float in that space. Is that how you're handling it now that you have one? Yeah, that's exactly how I handle it. I I, I think the best way to to handle like uh, a, a increased blood sugar is to bump your basal down if you're not eating anything. And that's that's what I that's the exact technique that I use. And um, I, as well, can't imagine um, treating my diabetes without a Dexcom either. It's, it's really an amazing piece of uh, technology. Yeah, I, I, got, I, I made that extra leap when I was discussing someone, uh, with someone about how artificial pancreas works. And it, just, uh -huh. it got into my head and I asked the question about like how, much, you know, how often does it bolus? And she responded, she says, well, actually, it does a lot of the manipulation through basal rates. And it just, I was like, oh, my God, that makes so much sense. Why did I never think of it like that before, you know? Yeah, and, and yeah. That, and now, you know, I today, my daughter's, you know, simple pre-bolus for her lunch today was, you know, was a, an extended bolus on top of an increased hemp basal. Of like, you know, it, mm -hmm. and it all just worked so sort of magically about, you know, because in the end, it's just, I mean, not that you don't know, but it's just the timing of, you have to time the carbs against the insulin. Like it has to, they have to be timed correctly together. It's sometimes right. that more than anything else, you know, do you, yep. um, do you pre bolus your meals? Um, I, I try to, I, uh, I, that's usually the idea, but the problem with me is, um, I, my, my, uh, like fitness regime changes a lot okay. and my, my meals, my, my calorie intake changes a lot. So a lot of times I I'll wait depending on, if I'm sure what I'm going to eat or not, you know? Okay. Well, and it's funny. I'm glad you brought that up because it's something I wanted to ask. So, you know, obviously I, I know who you are and I'm, I reached out to, to do this and, and, but at the same time, when I'm trying to check on some things that, you know, I want to talk to you about, I don't feel like you're unaware that it's not possible to Google you without seeing you with your shirt on off. So, um, <laughs> right. right. And so you're in insane shape. So I'm assuming first of all, your body fat is, is pretty low. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's higher than I'd like it to be as most people, but, um, I, 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 it's important to me to look good and stay in shape cause it's part of my job, you know? And, uh, it, it's always been important to me for sure. So my first question is, do you have problems finding sites? Because I think that's a fear people have. And I like people like you to be able to tell them that's not an issue because I, yeah, it's, it's not an issue. I do have to, uh, occasionally have to, I have a couple of bum sites right when I put them in. Mm -hmm. Um, but for me, most of the characters that I play aren't type one diabetic. I can't wait for the day where the, you know, I do play a diabetic. Right. So I don't have to worry about hiding my sights because I normally do put them on, on my butt cheeks because that's, uh, that's where I have the most fat and that's where I, I can also, you know, keep them out of sight for the characters I have to play. So, uh, that's, that's normally what I do with that. So then my other question is at your size, you're, you're probably taking in, I'm assuming more carbs than most people do. Uh, I would think, I would think so. Yeah. 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 And so what's a, like, what's an average bolus for your lunch? An average bolus for my lunch? Well, uh, it, I mean, I would probably take an average of six or seven units. Okay. And so you're not, eating, you're not eating a lot of high carb stuff then. I'm not eating a lot of high carb stuff, but I also have a really high basal rate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you need a lot of basal hour to hour to maintain. Yep. Oh, no I, 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 I have a very high basal rate. Um, so that's why my, uh, my bolus is on as high. No, that makes sense. I didn't even consider yeah. that. It, it's such a different because you just, you just told me you bolus less for lunch than my daughter did, which threw me off cause she weighs 97 pounds. And yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. But, but her basils, 
about 1.1 an hour, where yours is going to be, I'm guessing like six, I guess, or something like that, right? It's 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 more like four, four, four and a half. Okay, oh. but um, but um, yeah, it's it, it depends too, because um, especially right now, currently, since you asked me what I would give it right now, yeah. I'm um, I'm really trying to cut carbs a lot, so I'm trying to eat a lot of uh, a lot of rices and vegetables and and meats. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing right now with my current, my current diet. And, and when you exercise, do you find, do you have to cut your basal rate back prior to exercise or how do you? Because yeah, well, it, 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 depending on how intense my workout is, sometimes I'll totally disconnect if it's for less than an hour and it's really high intensity. Um, I'll put my basal rate on uh, my temp basal, it'll be about half my normal basal rate if I'm just going to the gym and lifting weights for a couple hours. Right. So it all kind of depends. Okay. All right. Um, I want to go back a little bit, a lot earlier. You, you said you'd only been in LA for like six years, but yet you, and, but you've been on your show for five. And so you just, you finished college and then just decided, okay, I've got this degree, but now I'm going to go try this. And, but it sounds like you had fair, a fair amount of success pretty early. How did that, how does that happen? I, I not to get too far off, but because I'm going to, I want to lead into a diabetes question, but how do you. How, how does that happen? Did you just find an agent or I don't know? Yeah, it's, um, you know what, uh, the, the recipe for making it out here quickly has to do with a lot of luck, a lot of timing and a little bit of talent. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and for me, um, what happened with me, I got my degree. I, um, I, I decided my senior year of college that I was going to go try to, you know, be a superhero mm-hmm. in, in the movies. And I, uh, I, I, talked to as many people as I could. I, I moved out here and I didn't know anybody. I didn't have uh, any contacts at all, but I talked to everyone that I could about the business. I read about it. I took as many acting classes as I could afford. I took as many meetings as I could in search of uh, representation. And I found a commercial agent pretty quickly and uh, started going on auditions for commercials. And uh, the, the first year I was here, I booked six national commercials, which is, uh, which is pretty good. It's, it's really good money to do commercials. And so I didn't have to get a real job, which was really important to my success, I think, oh, no um, because I kept putting my money towards acting classes and I wanted to hit the ground running and move as fast as I can. And I got here after college. So I was an adult and I didn't want to go out and, and party. And, and uh, the, the social life wasn't as important to me as moving forward with my, with my new career. Right. And so I, um, I booked these commercials and I was financially stable enough uh, living in L.A. And then I... Um, I had a friend at one of the top agencies in town and he walked me into the, one of the heads of their talent department and they put me on two auditions. And the first audition I went on was for the amazing Spider-Man with uh, Andrew Garfield right. as a, as a supporting character. And I wound up testing for the director uh, for Flash Thompson, which is not a very memorable character, but a uh, memorable character, but still had four scenes with the lead in, in a huge movie. And I didn't get it. And then the very next audition was Baby Daddy. And, um, and you booked that. That was that. Yeah, no kidding. And so, you know, so do you feel like, do you, when you go into these auditions, what's your level of comfort with letting somebody know you have diabetes right away? Is it something that you feel like you keep, because you know Ab- I mean? Absolutely. I, I'm not afraid to, I, I, I know that, I, I guess your question would make it seem like uh, I might be hesitant to let executives know because it's a liability. Well, because other people have brought it up, brought it up to me in the past. Like I've had ball- ballerinas on here who said that they, they didn't hide it, but then I've had actors who say that they've kept it quiet because everyone's afraid of what the, I guess they're already worried about getting rejected. They don't want to add another reason, but it is how I've sort of felt about it in the past. But I was wondering how you felt about it. Um, I, you know what, I'm not, I'm not ashamed or embarrassed at all. And I don't know if that's the right word, but I, I don't mind letting him know immediately that I, I'm a diabetic because I think that's kind of part of this, uh, this, this new world and part of the, uh, the, the diabetic community that I want to build is, is letting everyone in on it and, and not being, not letting it hold you back from doing anything. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so I, I'm not afraid of saying that I'm a type one diabetic immediately, but I do have it actually a really good story um, about my baby daddy audition. I, um, I, this was, like I said, one of my first big auditions uh, for, you know, television. I actually didn't even know what a sitcom was when I booked it, but the, uh, the, the crazy story is 
I went in for a, uh, a director session, which is when you go in for the main producer and the director and you work on the audition scenes for close to an hour uh, the day before you go in for the test. Okay. And when you go in for a test, you sit there, uh, you, you do your audition in front of around 15 people who are all, all there from the network and producers and they're all the high level people that get to make the decisions, you know? And so it's kind of a scary moment. Yeah. And this is after the contract has been signed and you usually go up against three to four other people. So it's a it's a pretty hectic moment in uh, an actor's world when you when you test for a big job because you know it could be life changing. But the day before, when I got to do my director session, I had a really low, uh, really low um, blood glucose level. I I my my session was scheduled for like eleven o'clock, so I figured I'd have breakfast and then I'd eat lunch after this. And um, the, the whoever they worked with before. Actually, I think it was, um, I can't remember their names now, actually. Um, it'll come to me, it'll come to me later. Anyway, anyway, whoever they were working with before went super long. So I didn't get into my session until around 1245. And so I was just waiting there and uh, my blood sugar started dropping. And I went in there and I, I was working with the director and we were talking about the character and talking about what he wanted from the scenes. And I just kind of started melting right in front of these guys. And my blood sugar got extremely low and I was, I was sweating and I was, I was not making sense. I wasn't saying my lines right, right. And I was sweating so bad that my shirt was completely wet and I didn't want to make excuses because I thought the last thing I needed to do was tell them that I had a problem and then they wouldn't hire me because I didn't want to tell them in this moment that I was a diabetic and having a real issue okay. because I wasn't even that coherent enough to explain myself. So then um, they let me go after about an hour of struggling and I, I make it to my, uh, or actually I got lost looking for my car in the, in the Disney, uh, the Disney lot, in the parking lot. I did like just a horrible day and got to my car, finally choked down a couple of power bars and like an old Gatorade in my back seat. And I, uh, I called my mom and I told her what happened and I was, I was crying because this was the biggest opportunity I'd ever had. And she told me that I had to call the casting director and let them know what happened. So I did that and, and told them, um, you know, I, I don't want to be the guy with excuses, but I, I have type one diabetes and I, I was having a, you know, a serious problem as I was, as I was testing. And, um, it's not something that happens often. And I just, I missed lunch and I, I had too much insulin and they said that that's okay. Um, they were still really excited about seeing me tomorrow. And of course the next day I, um, I had my blood sugar regulated. I was in the right spot. I had the right, you know, headspace and I booked the job. But uh, that moment, you know, is one of those moments where be because of me not having control of my diabetes, I totally could have uh, missed a huge opportunity for my career. But there, your mom came and saved the day with the good advice, though. Yeah, she was right. She was totally right. Because I, it, it's one of those moments where it, there was something obviously wrong and it almost seemed like I was on drugs, right, you know. Right, right, right. So, uh, so I explained to them and they were, they were very kind and it's uh, something we laugh about all the time now on set. So I have to ask, cause you just said something that made me think of something. So baby daddy is interesting because it's a, you know, it's a Disney thing, but it's, it's got racy themes periodically. Mm -hmm. And I just never really expected that. I don't know why exactly, but I think I, I, I saw a, an episode recently that was like all like kind of based around like marijuana use and everything. And I was like, wow, I didn't expect that it would go that way. But that's pretty cool that it's, uh, it, it just felt more real, I guess, because of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. And, um, you know, as, as the uh, seasons have progressed, I think we have gotten a little bit racier as we go. And, and I like that. It seems more realistic, uh, to me. And, um, you know, I, 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 I kind of appreciate it. Yeah. Is, is, is this, se the, is the latest season happening already or does it like, are you, the, uh, Go ahead again. I was what, just going to say, what? are you into the, is the season running? Because everything's so like online now and, and, and still on TV. Like, are you on Freeform right now running new episodes? We're on Freeform right now running new episodes, yes. Uh, we are, we've got two episodes left until our season finale. Uh, we are still in waiting to see if we're going to go back for more episodes this season, which is kind of crazy. But um, as you said, you know, a third, of, a third or more of our viewers are on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's something the way everything's spread out now. Hey, yep. listen, I don't know if this is it's not really online, but Disney Marvel, like, I mean, it is. You said you came down to be a superhero. I mean, I, it makes sense. Like, is that yeah. a, is that an in for you? Are you hoping it is, or is that? I mean, um, with, with Marvel, you mean? Yeah, like it just it 
I don't know. I would probably walk around all day, like whispering in people's ears. I could be this. I could be. I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's less whispering. It's yeah. more like, Hey, I'm here to be a superhero folks. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, honestly, there's, there's, um, there's some really, really, really amazing opportunities that are in my near future that I can't talk about right now. Oh, that's good. That's but it, it, as, as far as, um, as far as what I came here to do, I'm going to get some really amazing opportunities. And there's a couple of specific things right now that I've been talking to, uh, to the, the top with, but I, I can't disclose exactly what it is because I'm not sure how it's going to shake out. Well, I, ho- I, I hope the best for you there. And I hope they make the uh, character, uh, Type one too. That'd be yeah. That'd, that'd really be pretty be amazing, amazing, right? Actually. Yeah. Yeah. I can. Um. Uh, that'd be so cool. So let me. So we're getting up on an hour, and, and and you brought up a number of different times something that's really like near and dear to my heart is the idea of community and how it supports other people. And mm-hmm. so, have you been as, you know, have have you been like this the whole time, and I haven't noticed, or like I just feel like in the recent history. I've seen you being more out about diabetes, and I didn't know if that mm-hmm. is it. Just have you been doing it a different way, or how did it hit me uh, all of a sudden? I, I've been I've been trying to find the right way to approach this because um, I I want to partner with the right companies that I really that I believe in, and uh, and also that is going to have longevity, and I want to create my own charity eventually. So it's all kind of part of the plan. But I, I recently started working with Dexcom directly. And I partnered with them. So that's probably part of the reason that uh, you've noticed me a little bit more in the diabetic community because um, I, I've always, you know, done the, uh, the JDRF1 walk and I, I've, I've worked with uh, the, the Carousel of Hope and I've done smaller things with them. But since I partnered with Dexcom, I've really um, tried to grow my, my diabetes awareness for sure. So that's prob that, that's probably what the reason for that. Well, they you don't know this, but Dexcom and Omnipod both sponsor this podcast. So cool, uh, very but, cool. But yeah, but it, I guess that is how I guess I saw a picture of you in a pool, right? And so those pictures were for Dex. See, I don't even know that those pictures were for Dexcom. Yes. Oh, I see. Okay, and and hmm. so when you like you have a crazy following on Instagram, like an amount of people, and they're they're very reactive when you when you post something. Do you think that that's mostly from the acting or do you, or do you, can you see a, a diabetes community like happening there too? Oh, I mean, I, I definitely hope for, and, and I see my diabetes, uh, diabetes followers growing. That's, that's important to me. It really is. It always has been because I felt like there was nobody that I could, um, that I could look up to that was in the business that I'm in, who was open about type one diabetes yeah. there, there wasn't this, this actor or, or a singer or somebody that I really looked up to like that. And, and I want to try to see what I can do, do whatever I can to fill that, that position for young type one diabetics. But, um, yeah, as far as my following goes, I, um, I, I don't think that I have the amount of followers I do because I'm a diabetic, but I, I also do think that the diabetes diabetics who are interested, um, in, in, in me and what I'm doing, like, I think that I, I, I don't know why they wouldn't want to see what's happening and, and see the, the, the things that I'm doing and, and the kind of, you know, the, I, I, I really want to live my life to the fullest and not let the disease hold me back at all, you know? And I, that's, that's something I want to preach. I just think that's, it's such an important message because I see it on, you know, it's a very small example, but when I put a picture up of my daughter playing softball, that seems to motivate all those people who were concerned that there was something in life they were going to lose. You, you know, like, yeah. like getting diabetes was going to be like, Oh, now here are the list of things that I can't do anymore. And I just think yeah. it's, it's just genuinely very important for people like you to, to, to do what you're doing and to be in a position to say to people, look, not only, you know, am I here doing this and I'm successful at it and I'm healthy and I'm in great shape and all these other things, these are all things that you can, you can do just as well as I can. And I think that's fantastic. So yeah. I, I really and appreciate they- you doing it. Thank you so much for saying that, Scott. Like, I, I appreciate you saying that. And that is that totally the, uh, the message I want to put out there. I, I want anyone who's friends with a diabetic or, or a parent for a diabetic or a, a young diabetic person, I, I want them all to believe that they can accomplish anything that they want. And, and there's, there's, you know, there's literally nothing that they, they can't a- accomplish as, as long as they're, you know, responsible with their disease and, and they push forward. No, I, uh, that's really great. Listen, I, I really appreciate this. I'm going to let you go because I feel like this has been a great conversation. I, I'm super glad that we met because, you, you know, it just, 
I really, I was on a limb. Like I was like, wow, I wonder if this guy would do the podcast. And, uh, and it's just very cool that you did it. So, um, no problem. I guess we just tell people baby daddy's on free form and online and I'll put some links in the show notes in case they want to check it out and I'll, I'll find out your Instagram handle and I'll put that in there too. Yeah, that, that's, that's easy. Yeah. My Instagram handle is just, uh, at my name and the, uh, Pretty much the only place you'll be able to see Baby Daddy is going to be on Netflix soon. We've got a couple episodes left, but uh, besides that, I um, I'm hoping within the next year I'll be I'll be doing something else really cool. I feel like we're going to see you in spandex somewhere pretty soon. So that is uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe maybe a cape too. We'll see. Well, let me let me just shout out right now to any people who are making those decisions. You're going to save a ton of money on the fake muscles in the suit. You're not going to need them. <laughs> and so uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's why I'm going straight to the gym right after this because of that. Uh, please, I, I, I've had enough of you already. My wife looking at your picture today was enough for me, Derek, so I'm done with that. <laughs> uh, all right, well, well, it was fun while it lasted. Yeah, dude, I really appreciate this so much. Thank you so much. Yep, you're very welcome, Scott. Have a great day. You too, bye. Bye. Thank you so much to Derek for coming on the podcast and sharing the way he did. That was amazing. You can check out Baby Daddy on Netflix or find Derek on Instagram. I've got all the links you'll need in the show notes. If you're enjoying the Juicebox podcast and you think it's been a value in your life, please share it with a friend, somebody else you know living with type 1 diabetes or someone who loves someone with type 1 diabetes. And if you really love the podcast, consider going to iTunes and leaving a great rating and a review. You could probably just do it right through your Apple podcast app. I'll be back next week with another episode of the Juicebox podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Hit it now while you're in the app. Hit subscribe, subscribe. This is push the button. Subscribe. Do it. Thanks again to Omnipod and to Dexcom for being such amazing supporters of the Juicebox podcast. They are the reason why we can bring you these great interviews. Please visit myomnipod.com forward slash juicebox or dexcom.com forward slash juicebox to learn more 